You own your career. What will you work on to invest in your career, to invest in you? What skill will you invest your time and money into building? What training, coaching, or experience will you focus on to build that skill? Welcome to You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. You are ambitious in life and in your career, but something is missing. You want to bring more of your passion to what you do. Because let's be honest, you pour a ton into your work and it needs to mean more. I'm your host, Laura Eigel. I'm a mom, wife, PhD, coach, advocate, introvert, and indoor rowing fanatic. I'm passionate about living a life that's in line with my values. We'll give you the actionable tips and tools you need to lead with your values, make a difference, and have career success. The world needs more diversity and authenticity in the top jobs at organizations. Your leadership belongs there. You belong in the C-suite. One of my favorite things is to get direct messages on LinkedIn from female executives. They reach out to me directly, maybe on a not so great day after back-to-back meetings or being triple booked after a day ruled by things, not moving the needle. And they think, what are we even accomplishing here? I don't feel like I'm making an impact. They reach out to connect because they want a safe space to figure out what's next for their career. Because right now in their role, they know it doesn't feel right. Something is misaligned. They know it in their gut and they've made a pivotal decision. And that's why this is one of my favorite things because these leaders are ready to be intentional and strategic in their career. That feeling might sound similar to you You might be watching others get promoted, seeing other people ascend to positions that are well beyond their skill set, and you feel frustrated and maybe not valued. I want to tell you that you can step into larger, higher paying roles while having boundaries you never even thought were possible. How would it feel to walk into your work week, knowing that you have a list of challenging things ahead of you, that you have more control over your day? You know, you might be shocked how calm and centered and focused that you feel. The opportunities are coming your way and there's no part of you that's hesitating to consider them. I want you to get more strategic in your career, to figure out that next step, to land that promotion that you want, to feel like you are in charge of your week, to set the standard for how you work and how you show up. I know that you're ready. You're ready now. Join me and other high achieving women in the six month group coaching cohort. Apply now at thecatchgroup.com slash group coaching. That's thecatchgroup.com slash group coaching. Learn more and apply today for the You Belong in the C-Suite group coaching program. Welcome to this week's episode of the You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. I'm excited for you to hear this listener favorite episode, but before we jump in, I wanted to share a few fun achievements since celebration is one of my company's core values. First, we have been rated in the top 20 internationally of podcasts in the last couple of weeks in a couple of different countries, including Australia and Canada and the careers category, which is really fun to see. And then also in a recent five-star review, a listener mentioned the podcast is well worth your time. Excellent host content and guest insights delivered in an authentic, straightforward, and actionable way. Laura is inspiring and practical. She's been there and speaks from experience and empathy, like spending time with your best work mentor. And last, I wanted to share that my book, Values First, How Knowing Your Core Beliefs Can Get You the Life and Career You Want, was recently named a finalist in the Paige Turner 2022 Awards. I am really excited to celebrate those small and big accomplishments. I recently re-listened to this episode after a conversation with a coaching client. She had mentioned that earlier in her career, She had been invested in by her company. She had been sponsored to go to multiple leadership programs and gotten different experiences. But in the last couple of years, her sponsors had moved on to other parts of the business 
And now she felt, well, forgotten and undervalued. We talked about how empowering it felt now that she feels like she can take control over the narrative of her own career. She doesn't want to wait around anymore for her organization. And she's investing in herself to make that happen. And I think this episode of owning your career and investing yourself is a timely one for many right now. So after I listened to this episode that you're about to hear, I thought about my own career and I reflected back on what I've done even since recording this episode, which was just over a year ago. So since then, I've invested even more time and more money into investing in me, my career. I'm spending more time at networking events. Specifically now, I'm part of the faculty at 5050 Women on Boards, which is a leading global education and advocacy campaign driving the movement towards gender balance and diversity on corporate boards. So I've learned more about building my personal brand, and now I also teach others how to build their network strategically using that personal brand. I've also joined an entrepreneurial mastermind with other business owners. We meet weekly and even get critiques on different parts of our business, which has been invaluable to me. I'm also investing my time and money on coaching certifications that start in Q4. Those are just a few of the things that I'm prioritizing aligned to my values of growth and advocacy. So I'm investing in myself. And it feels good to be investing in my time and my money into my career. So let's get started with this episode. And I hope that you can take away some actionable things that you can do that are low cost or a little bit more of an investment in your time and money to own your own career. Invest in yourself. Welcome to this week's episode of You Belong in the C-Suite podcast. I'm really excited about our topic today, owning your own career by investing in yourself. Whether you are new in your career or already in the C-suite, this episode is for you. Let's get started. If I asked you who owns your career, what would you say? Is it the company that you work for? Your manager? A combination of both? Nope. It is you. You own your career. 100%. That may feel overwhelming, but to me, it's empowering. You own how you progress. You own how you lead. You own how you grow. Of course, your manager and the company or organization that you work for can accelerate your career, but you get to own it. You can own your career while having an amazing manager or while having a horrible one. You can own your career while working in your dream job or while working in a job that's just okay. You can own your career while working at an amazing organization or at an organization that's not so amazing. If you work for a nonprofit, consulting, or in corporate, you technically work for someone else. And if you're waiting for someone else to guide your career, like your manager or a mentor or human resources, You might be getting some great advice or tools, but if you want action, you need to own it for yourself. The organization is going to do what is best for the organization, what's best for business. You need to do what's best for you. For some, the same things that are best for the business are best for you, and that's amazing, and you should always take advantage of those opportunities. But organizations have limited resources and funds to invest in their employees. Believe me, I know. I've had a career in building the strategy for how organizations spend training dollars. And believe me, there's a strategy to it. Organizations invest their dollars in specific ways to build organizational capabilities or capabilities of employees that have big potential so that they can accelerate business faster. If you are a leader in a company that is investing with you, in you, you know it, you can feel it. You get offered invitations to leadership program, You get maybe more meet and greets with executives. You know, companies grow talent and capabilities of their employees by investing in them. You can do the same thing for yourself. Use the same strategy that companies have to invest in talent. I recently listened to a Color Forward podcast episode and co-host Rosa Santos said something like, 
your career is your business. So you need to treat your career like your business and what a business is do. They invest back into the business for growth. No matter what your situation, you get to own your career and there is power in that. My career has been driven by my values of growth, development and achievement. And I'll be honest with you, I'm a continuous learner. I'm kind of a development geek. I love reading, I love growing, I love developing myself and others. I'm gonna tell you about how you can own your career by investing in yourself. I'll walk you through things that I've done myself and continue to do. Some are free, some require investment. And that means investment in your time or investment like dollars. I'll talk you through how to figure out what you need to develop and how to prioritize it. Then we'll go through a few of my favorite ways to own your career by investing in yourself. So first, how do you even know what you need to invest in? What skill do you need to build? One place to start is recent feedback that you've received. What feedback have you gotten in your performance reviews or from your manager? What are you currently struggling with that you keep putting off? There are many schools of thought on this. One way of thinking is to look at what you have gotten feedback on, like an opportunity area, and start from there. Another way of thinking is to look at a strength and to focus on honing that even more to make it a towering strength. Personally, I think it is unrealistic to make an opportunity area a towering strength. Instead, let's focus forward. Where are you trying to go into your next job? What skills or experiences are needed in that role that you don't have just yet? For instance, if you want to lead a department but only have a few direct reports, then you may want to focus on how to lead large teams, large projects, or motivating and influencing without authority. So first, figure out what you want to develop. Talk to your manager or a trusted peer or even your direct report. Tell them what skill you're trying to develop. Would they prioritize the same thing for you? Here are a few things that I've helped leaders develop recently. Developing a clear strategy. Communicating consistently to stakeholders. The ever-present and super confusing executive presence. Motivating and inspiring your team through authentic leadership. How to get more visibility for your team with senior leadership. Building boundaries. Prioritizing and saying no. When people think about development, the thing they think about first, I'd say 99% of the time, is a training course. Guess what? That is not the only way to develop yourself. And it may not even be the most effective way, depending on the skill that you're trying to develop. There's a model called the 70-20-10 approach in development. 10% of how you develop yourself should be through training. Only 10%. 20% is mentorship or coaching from a manager or mentor. And 70% is really on the job or experiential learning. The idea being that you actually do the thing to get better at it. From my previous example of wanting to lead a bigger team or a department, you know, you could take a training class on leading bigger teams. You could be mentored by someone who has led a big department, but to really learn how to do it, you might actually have to lead a big team. But how do you get the experience without being able to get the job? It feels sometimes like this is a chicken or the egg, which comes first. I need the experience before I can do it, but how do you get the experience without getting the job? So that's why I think training is thought of so much as the first step in development. It isn't always the best way to develop the skill, but sometimes it's the most affordable or approachable way to start developing yourself. Training and mentorship can also create experiences for you to practice on the job and practice that skill. I'm going to start with some examples of some free or low cost options to get started. How would it feel to go into every job opportunity or boardroom without hesitation? Because you have a clear value system that guides you. How would it feel to have renewed energy and focus to put your skill set to work by stepping out of things that are not meant for you and actually prioritizing your own needs, reaching that career milestone that you want and establishing the legacy that you know you're here to leave with your authentic leadership? I am thrilled to be opening enrollment for our You Belong in the C-Suite group coaching program. This program is for leaders who are ready to step into the next level of their career without sacrificing everything and their values to get it. You belong in the C-Suite, and it's time that you start believing it. 
The world needs more diversity and authenticity in the top jobs at organizations. You are ready. You have what it takes to get there. And I'm going to show you the skills that it takes to thrive there. Learn more at thecatchgroup.com slash group coaching. That's thecatchgroup.com slash group coaching. First things first, what is already available to you through the company you work for? If your company is big enough, there are people in your company whose literal job it is to build out learning for you. Whether that's onboarding, leader training, or specific skills to your industry, there is somebody building that stuff, curating that for you, and you probably don't even realize what's available to you right now. I used to be the person whose job it was to build out that learning strategy for big organizations. And believe me, most employees don't realize the training that is already available to them. Be curious and see what you can find. If you don't know where to start, go to your manager or HR representative and ask them where to start. It's usually through your company's internal portal or HR page. They will be happy to point you in the right direction if you don't know where to go. A second example of places to learn and grow that is pretty free are podcasts. You're listening to one right now. So this is one way that you like to get information. There are so many podcasts now. You can be inspired through story and examples shared by experts in the field by a skill that they've already learned. You can learn from their mistakes and their successes. Do a quick search where you listen to podcasts and see what pops up. Try out a new podcast to start your learning journey. Number three on low cost options for development books. I hear it a lot. I don't have time to read or I don't like reading nonfiction. If you listen to podcasts, you might like listening to audiobooks. There are also book summaries available through services like summary.com, get abstract or short form, where it basically gives you a shortened version of the book to give you an example of what's in it. Another way that I like to learn, and the fourth way I'll share, is through following leaders that I admire on Facebook and LinkedIn. It's very free, and a lot of their content is similar to what they're sharing in their books or podcasts. I also love seeing who my favorite leaders are collaborating with or whose voices they are amplifying so that I can find other leaders to follow and content that I didn't even know existed. A fifth way is through industry groups. You are an expert in something in your job. And then if you're an expert in it, then there are probably other people that are doing similar things across the industry. And there are groups that bring all of you together. I've mentioned SIOP before, the Society for Industrial Organizational Psychologists. That is one of the groups that I belong to based on my field. There are also many women's organizations that I'm a part of or follow. These organizations or associations are usually memberships that have a low cost annual fee, or some even have free annual memberships with options to join free or paid training or conferences. Since the pandemic, there is just so much content out there. Sometimes it can be overwhelming, but I would start with your industry groups and some of it's free and some of it's paid. But just like a company, these organizations have someone that is building training and experiences for their members to learn, grow, and network. Find an industry group or an association that you could benefit from or one that you haven't engaged with in a while. This might be an amazing time to network and build those relationships that could turn into job opportunities or mentorship opportunities. A sixth way that is low cost are free or paid Facebook or LinkedIn groups. There is probably a Facebook group or whatever skill you're trying to build. Also those industry associations that I talked about most likely have some kind of group to join. I find that Facebook has better functionality than LinkedIn for some of these groups. A seventh idea is edX or Coursera. These are sites that are basically huge courses that you can take. They're called MOOCs, Massive Online Open Courses. You can audit many of these courses for free, and a lot of them are affiliated with top universities. Some of them offer very low-cost paid certification as well and are self-paced. And last, you can get that on-the-job experience in different ways too. Through volunteering for leading a big project or in a leadership position in your employee resource group, industry group, or on a nonprofit board. When we think of getting prepared for a job and making a big investment, sometimes the first thing that comes to mind is investing in formal education. For instance, getting an MBA. 
I know that my biggest investment for myself was graduate school. I had scholarships, but I also had to take out student loans to, you know, live. Investing in my master's and doctorate is what started me off in my development journey. Back then, I knew it would advance me in my career. I'm not sure that's the case anymore in the current market, but then it was true for me and it did accelerate my career. I was recently talking to another coach about how in the U.S., we know that college and higher education is expensive, but we pay for them anyway. But other opportunities sometimes seem strange to invest actual dollars in when it comes to our own development and growth. What are other ways to accelerate your growth and development besides formal education or going back to school? I'll discuss a few. There are leadership programs within executive education and in business schools that offer programs like leadership courses, but not as formal as a MBA. Some of these focus on entrepreneurial tracks, finance for non-financial managers, or change management, for example. They may give certificates, and some have really great components of action learning within them. So you get to bring an actual problem you're trying to solve at work, and you solve it as you go through the program. So you get actual experience as you go through the program and have a solid outcome as well. There are also leadership programs within industry or those membership associations, like I mentioned before, that are longer term that can help you grow with other people from that industry or in the same cohort or group, like basically going through that learning together. Learning tracks at industry conferences are also a great way to get extra training and networking in. Again, a lot of these are offered now virtually. You can also join a mastermind or a small training group. Many experts that have gone before you have figured things out along the way and then have built out experiential long-term courses or masterminds to help you build a skill that you want to develop. And you do it within a peer environment. So you aren't just learning from the leader of the group, but you're also learning from peers inside the group. These are great ways to keep accountable and they're usually an investment in time and your money. Lastly, you could invest in a coach. A coach can offer you one-on-one accountability and a path forward. There are so many kinds of coaches, and it has now become a very accessible option. There are life coaches, prioritization coaches, business coaches, leadership coaches, executive coaches, lifestyle coaches, you name it, and there is probably a coach for it. Personally, I invest in a writing coach and a leadership coach. Yes, coaches have coaches too. Other things that I have personally invested my time and money into the last decade of my career are books, podcasts, Facebook, LinkedIn groups, assessments, certifications, online courses, women's leadership programs, industry memberships and industry conferences, a leadership coach, a writing coach. The higher up I've gotten in my career, the more I've invested in my own career. In the last year, I've had different goals, some of the entrepreneurial. So I've joined different groups to learn in a different way to speed up my learning curve. For me, I know that I need accountability. So coaches and peer groups work well for me to keep on track and keep moving forward and progressing in my own development. I've spent over 15,000 in the last year alone investing in myself. Even though those paths are usually a bigger investment in time and money, I know that I'll personally get results that I can own my career, my path, and my trajectory. Sometimes that's what owning your career looks like. It's spending time or your money now to fast forward the learning and the outcome. It holds me accountable. And in that I'm living my values of growth, development and achievement. So let's summarize. You own your career. What will you work on to invest in your career, to invest in you? What skill will you invest your time and money into building? What training, coaching or experience will you focus on to build that skill? Listen to podcast number two, on creating boundaries to get tips on prioritizing your development and building a boundary and protecting that learning time. That wraps up today's episode. Thank you for being part of this community. You are a leader. Your leadership belongs here. You belong in the C-suite. I want to thank you so much for listening to the You Belong in the C-suite podcast. If you are enjoying this content, please remember to rate and review on Apple Podcasts. By leaving a review, you are helping others find this content. We will be featuring five-star reviews on air in upcoming episodes. 
editing and support for the podcast is done by S and E podcast management to get more tips and tools to help you live a life guided by your values. Go to thecatchgroup.com. Keep your boundaries and take care. Thank you.